Okay, so now that we have our dial feet um, screws installed, we can get to the next step, which is um, de-energizing the balance wheel, or really just de-energizing the mainspring, because right now my balance is moving because I wound it up. It's likely that, that the, the movement that you get in the mail is probably not going to be moving just by the way we ship it. But I think it's a good idea when you take the movement out of the box to go ahead and put it in the winding position and make sure it winds up. Make sure that balance wheel is um, is spinning, because if it isn't, then that means your movement isn't working. So you want to get it going. And then once it's going, you certainly don't want to set your hands with the second hands with the second hand pinion spinning or the hour hour hand spinning or any of the hand spinning. So we got to de-energize the mainspring. And to do that on this particular movement, you need to remove the rotor. And I'm also going to show you removing the rotor because some of you might have bought our uh, engraved rotor. So you're going to re remove the factory rotor so that you can later put on your engraved rotor. And we're going to cover that now. Now you're going to need your movement holder that is included with the Esslinger toolkit. It is an eight in one movement holder. It moves, um, it holds a bunch of different sized movements. I've found that, you know, there's, there's this large cutout side. And then on the very opposite, there's this medium cutout. And that's where you're going to want to set the movement into for removing the rotor. Um, so you really just place the movement over top of the movement holder. You want to get it in there level. When you put it in, you don't want to make you want to make sure you're not doing anything to hit the um, hit the balance wheel. But you know there really isn't a way to hit it on this movement. It's kind of inset. I've worked with other movements where the balance wheel is at the edge, and you got to be really careful when you're working with it. Um, so I'm going to get it in there until it's tight. You don't have to ratchet down on it really hard, but you want to get it so it's secure. And there is um, several levels of notches on the movement holder to accommodate the movement. You can see how I'm resting in there. Once you get it tight enough and you feel that you can put some downward pressure on it without it slipping, you're good to go. So this is the part where you're going to need your uh, your sticky notes. Just grab a piece and uh, grab a scissor. I have. Um, A keychain scissor I'm actually going to use. Primarily because I forgot my regular set of scissors. But these will work fine. They're actually better if they're smaller. So on the sticky side of the sticky note, this is the sticky part. You want to cut a notch. So triangular notch in the sticky part of the sticky note. And we're going to put that like so over the rotor so it sticks to the rotor. And then I want you to turn the rotor so it is covering the escapement, the balance wheel, the hairspring, and, and the purpose of this is twofold. One, it's to prevent you from somehow slipping on the screw and hitting the balance, and also the sticky note is there to prevent you from scratching the rotor. Um, the rotor scratch cr scratches incredibly easily, and um, I found that this is the best way to get off the rotor if it's your first attempt at trying such a thing. And even for someone like me who attempts it all the time, I always like to be extra safe because it's no fun to have scratches on the back of your movement. 
especially when you have a display case pack on the watch. So you're going to get your largest screw, green tipped, and it's essentially lefty loosey righty tidy. So we're going to grab our optics on, turn on the light maybe, and I'm going to hold down on the movement. See how I'm holding the screw like this. The top part of the screwdriver will spin. I'm going to hold the screw tip close to where I'm touching the screw. And I'm going to turn. And it's kind of tough at first. From the factory it's on there really tight. But I'm going to go ahead and screw, unscrew until I know that it's loose. And then the great thing is because you have the rotor attached to the sticky part of the sticky note, you can just lift straight up. So there I've not damaged any part of the movement. I've not scratched my rotor. The, um, the screw and rotor are held there nicely for you. And you can drop both off in your P2Drish slash parts tray. And they can stay there for the rest of the build till we go to put on the rotor. And if you have a um, if you have an engraved rotor, then you have this off for when you're ready to install it. And that's going to be at a later stage of the build. So our rotor is off and we're ready for um, discharging the mainspring, which will be the next section in the video.